Sound design in your game is very important. As independent developers, we've got to understand this one very important thing. Players will not tolerate poor sound design. They will forgive almost any graphic issue or janky art concept, but if your game has poor sound design, players may not be able to pinpoint what it is that makes your game feel off, but they'll stop playing and you may never get that feedback. At a high level, there's three ways to look at this. UI effects, background music, and interaction events. We're not talking about composing. That's a little too time consuming for this video. If you are a composer though, drop a comment. Hopefully we get the chance to work together on a future project. When I talk about UI effects, what I mean is the whooshes, the beeps, and the boops in your game. Anytime the player interacts with the UI, there should be some type of audio feedback that lets the player know that they've done something. For background music, it's a little more subjective. You're gonna have to pick something that feels right for your level scene or for your game. When I talk about interaction events, what I mean are things that the player or other characters can do within the context of the game that make noise. For example, the roar of the engine in my racing game, a gun firing, glass breaking, that sort of thing. Getting the sound right is the most time consuming element of development. There's no way to do it faster. You can't save any scripts or make it easier for yourself. You just have to listen to track after track after track until you find the perfect ones for your game. Here's how I'm designing the sound for my racing game, Old Town Racing Club. I'm using Upbeat.io and Freesound.org, links are down in the description. Since I've added all the sound effects already, what I'm going to do is actually go to my music player and mute the background music so that way it's not getting in the way of what we're trying to talk about. So when I play the level, you'll be able to hear it as soon as I click on any of the options, it does the window open sound. And then if I click it again, it closes and plays the window close sound. Uh, I feel like this is a good enough sound effect for what I'm trying to do. It's not too jarring, it's not too busy. Um, and every time the player opens or closes a window in this game, that's the sound effect that's gonna play. And also, if the player selects a color, it makes a little sound effect indicating that they've selected that color. Now there's also a, a money option, but we can see money's not coming out of the game just yet. And then I'll go ahead and unmute the background music just so you can hear it all together. And if you look at the background music player, it does loop for us and it plays on awake. So as soon as the level loads, it's going to start playing the background music. Now I've gone ahead and added this to an empty game object. And my thinking here is that if I want to have the player control this either with volume or selectable tracks or something like that, I've got to assign an object for that player to actually control with, uh, with an options menu. And that could be coming on a later video. Um, I've also added some tracks that will play uh, on certain levels. So I've got a whole folder in my project view of music. So I've selected a few tracks from mostly from upbeat.io. Now it's important to note that when using services like upbeat.io and freesound.org that you check the rights. At the time of this video, upbeat.io is allowing me to use these tracks based on their stated rights. So you can use them for projects just like this. Freesound.org is similar. You want to make sure that the sounds you're downloading have the correct rights for your project or you acquire those rights for your project. Not everything on Freesound has the same level of rights, so you want to double check that on each file. Now I'm going to cover just real quick how I was able to achieve the sound effects, just for those of you who want to know what that's all about. In my UI elements game object, I've got the body panel style selector and the paint panel selector. And if we open each of those up and look at the individual elements, for a sky car and sports car, we can see that the, the play one shot sound effect happens in each of these options. So when the player clicks either one of these, the play one shot is gonna happen. Now, the location of this unit is very important. So again, let's open this up full screen. The graph is gonna go through and it's the same for both. This is going to set the game object sky car to be active and deactivate sports car and set the active variable to sky car body, okay? And then it's gonna plug that in to the save variable for the body color. So 
what I want to cover now is where I put the actual sound effects and how I how you get them to play using uh, visual scripting in Unity. So in my car mods window, that's this on the left is my car mod. So no matter what mods I want to add to the game, I'll just copy and paste this method. So I've got the body style button and the paint color button, and each of these is going to have its own flow graph. And right here in the flow graph, I've got it to play a one shot for open window and close window. Now this is very important um, that there's both of them after this branch. So what it's going to do is it's going to test to see if it's already active so it doesn't open or close if you click it. And then it's going to highlight the outer color. Of course it turns green if it's on, it turns white if it's not. And then it's going to play the window open and close window, open window sound effects uh, depending on which, uh, which version is going to be true or false in that branch. It's the same for the paint color button also. So it's closed window and open window. They're identical. Now if you do a play one shot just like this, it's actually not going to work unless you have unless you have an audio source attached to the game object. Within the audio source there doesn't have to be an audio clip selected, there just has to be an audio source so that the one shot is registered by that game object and basically fed to the, the camera very similar for the body style panel and paint panels. Each of these have selectable options within them and on those options is where we find the one shot for it's basically just a click that little knock that you hear when the object is selected. Now I like to put these a little closer to the uh, event but sometimes if you put them too close to the event they fire too soon and then nothing happens um, so you can play around with that. You can actually move these to a spot within the graph that, that makes more sense. In other words, if you think about it in terms of C sharp, you're moving this up and down in the in the lines of code is all you're doing. So it fires earlier or later. It's the same thing with visual scripting left to right. Um, just something to be aware of that if you if have a one shot a little later on in your code or your graph, um, it may sound a little funny and you may be able to achieve a more desirable result if you move it to the left um, and all you would do to achieve that is just disconnect the nodes here and here and then select it and just drop it in and move everything else over to the right so I'm sneak it in somewhere else basically. We'll load up the speed test level and in the speed test level we can see that there's also music uh, and it does the same thing. It plays on awake and we're going to go ahead and make that loop. That's just an oversight and it's going to play a rock track for I believe the name of the track is The Justice. That's just one that I liked, it sounded like, but I saved them like this so I could tell what genre it was and where I wanted to place them in my game. So this one says level track. I knew this was a racing level and it's of the rock genre. So if I play this level, you'll be able to hear it real, real soon. Now the car is pink because the material for the car is assigned on the garage level, which I did not do. I just wanted to show off that uh, that music music pack there. I also added a money pickup. We're going to cover that in a later video. Um, but for now, we'll go back to the garage scene and we'll show the whole thing in culmination. So we'll go ahead and play the game. We can hear all the tracks playing at once. Hopefully you can still hear me. We're going to go ahead and keep the sky car, but we're going to give it a body color. I like black. And then we'll play the level. Now we're racing. Adjusting the background volume is actually pretty easy. What you would do is go to the music player and change and just slide this down so the background music is, is just lower. So that's why I like having a game object that houses the background music so I can just make the adjustment in real time. Uh, or ideally I would just give control of this to the player so the player can adjust it in real time and, and have, the, have the effect that they're looking for in their gameplay experience. And I think that's everything. I think that covers it all. Thank you for watching this far. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. And if you found this video helpful, 
Check out this one to see what this level was like before we added the sound effects.